we're talking about uh, reversing global warming and desertification with livestock. And that topic itself is clearly, um, you know, galvanizing to say the least. Um, but there's an innovation in terms of how livestock are being managed, which I, which I think is essential for us to know about. And it has to do with using them in a way which simulates the herd impact that the grasslands evolved with. And traditionally, throughout the Americas and in uh, Southern Africa and in all the continents, there were massive herds of hundreds of millions of mammals, and grasslands are basically dry, seasonal rainfall in, uh, environments. And <coughs> the grasslands are dying in part because of the severing of the ecosystem of the mammals with, uh, well, just the severing of the ecosystem. So the mammals are no longer impacting the, uh, the ranges the way they used to. And it's not just mammals, by the way. I mean, it, it's like it could be uh, marsupials. It's basically herbivores. It's herding herbivores, uh, mostly mammals. So um, let me just go right to this video. I figure we'll just start right off the right way with multimedia. and they can also have uh, grass for their livestock so that they can improve their livestock production. <laughs> what, what were you most impressed with today? Um, just the way they were relating their experiences, how they, uh, they, they got uh, to be involved in the project, what they learned, what they got from the project and so on. It was them talking, not us. Because they now have grass for their animals. They now have water for their animals. Even though their rivers are not running uh, throughout the year, but the time is longer when the, the rivers flow and they stop flowing. Okay, I want to just stop it right there and just start the discussion. What did you hear? Anyone go first. What did you hear her say? Someone Okay, so they have water for their livestock. What, what else did you hear? The rivers are flowing longer. The rivers are flowing longer. Right. Anyone else just throw out something? Yeah. Um, it sounds like it's a very participatory approach, so people are kind of coming together and sharing ideas. Participatory approach. Excellent. Did I see a hand here? Go ahead. Grass. They have more grass for their livestock. They have more grass for their livestock, yeah. They're using their own livestock. Yep. Excellent. I knew Fletcher would be great. <laughs> how does this make you feel? Just hearing that. How does that make you feel? It's positive. It's positive. Yeah. What's what is this sustainable for the practice? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what about the fact that, she, that, that the whole concept, they're saying they're using livestock to improve the land. We're, how does that sit with you? Yeah. It's counterintuitive because usually we think that livestock tends to push uh, forest or <coughs> other uses of land and erode the, the land and it comes into the certification. Right. Right, so it sits contrary to what you're used to thinking. Anyone else want to jump in on that? Uh, Bill says absolutely. I mean, absolutely. The entire 10,000 years of animal husbandry is evidence of just the opposite, creating deserts. And now we understand that as soil is lost, 
that's a form of CO2 contribution to the atmosphere, and in fact a very significant form of CO2 contribution. So there is no question whatsoever that <coughs> animal husbandry has been destroying grasslands and creating deserts and, and adding, to, um, <coughs> and adding to, the, to, the climate, to the CO2 climate load. Um, but they're trying to do something different. They're trying to uh, restore a type of balance in terms of how land is impacted in the absence of the herding herbivores that these grasslands used to have. 